In today's video, I'm going to be going over the parts of an ERIC-429 word. To start off, I'm just going to have a quick overview of ERIC-429. Um, it's a standard that's used for data transfer, commonly used in aviation. The data is transferred in 32-bit units called either frames or words. You might hear either of these used interchangeably. And each of the words contains five individual fields. So that's different parts of the 32 bits that are sent out. And those different fields have different meanings. And we're going to be going over those today. So here's our Air Inc. 429 word. You can see we have 32 bits labeled on this page from right to left. So bit 1 is the first one sent. And bit 32 is the last bit sent. So you can see here that we've got the first eight bits, those we call our label. Then the next two bits we call SDI, and I'll be going over what that means later. And then we have these 19 bits, and that's our data. And we have bits 30 and 31. These two are called the SSM. Once again, I'll be going over what that stands for later, and bit 32 we have P or the parity. So we're just gonna go through these one at a time and I'll explain what they do, what they mean, how to read them, how to use them, and hopefully give you a better understanding of ERINC 429. So we're gonna start with uh, the first eight bits, which are our label. Um, the label tells us what information is being sent. Um, examples could be airspeed, altitude, monitor status, whatever kind of information you wanna be sending on the bus you will identify it with the label. So basically the label is just telling whatever unit is receiving the data what kind of information they're going to be receiving. In ERING 429, the label is represented in octal, which is a little tricky, but we're going to be going over it here. For this standard, bit 1 is going to be our most significant bit, and bit 8 is going to be our least significant bit. And these 8 bits are just broken out from the, the big table I have here. These 8, I'm just zooming in on them here. So the way this works, and the way we're going to look at it today, is we're going to say that bits 1 and 2, those are our hundredths place, so those will represent 100 and 200. Bits 3 through 5 are our tens place, so those will be 10, 20, and 40. And then bits 6 through 8 are our ones place, so we'll call those 1, 2, and 4. And the way that we're going to do this is we're just going to take the value of each one of these bits that's set to 1 and then add them all together. And I'll show a quick example of that here. So let's say that this is the label we receive. So I'm just going to look at the 1s here. So we have a 1 there, 1 there, 1 there, 1 there, and 1 here. And then we're going to add together their values. So we're going to have 1 plus 4 plus 10 plus 20 plus 100. So 1 plus 4 plus 10 plus 20 plus 100. And that's going to be equal to 135. And this is the label that we'll use to identify whatever information comes after this on the frame. Another way that you could look at this, um, if you're a little more familiar with base conversions, is you could take the binary value here. So in our case, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. And I, I started with the 0 because that's our most significant bit, and that's how we write the binary value. And this is base 2. And if you're good with base conversions, maybe you want to put that into base 10, which we're all more familiar with. So that's going to be 93 in decimal, or base 10. And then if we convert that into octal, base 8, we're going to get 135, base 8. So like I said before, we use the octal representation for the label in this standard. And that's just something to keep in mind if you ever need to decode one of these labels. But either way, once we get to this point, we know that we have label 135. And based on how the bust was defined, that 135 could mean airspeed, it could mean position, it could mean anything. Um, it's really up to the engineers who define the system. There are some standards that some companies will use for different numbers that always mean certain parameters. But at the end of the day, you should really just be checking with whoever defined the system. 
which labels mean what on our particular bus. The next part of the ARINC 429 frame that we're going to be looking at is the SDI, and SDI stands for Source Destination Identifier. This is usually used to tell us where the data is coming from. So for example here, I have these two SDI values. Maybe on your aircraft SDI 01 means that the data is coming from your left hand air data probe, and SDI 10 means it's coming from the right hand data probe. And obviously with these two bits you can also have 0, 0, 1, 1, and you can do what you like with those. Um, they can be unused as well. But the SDI can also be used, although it's less common to specify the intended receiver. So if you have one transmitting device and a bunch of listening devices and you want to send data to a specific one, maybe you can use the SDI to tell the listening devices if that data is for them or not. Um, but most commonly it is used for identifying the source and not the destination, but it can be used for either. I've also seen the SDI used in conjunction with the label to tell you what kind of data is being transmitted. That's a little bit less common, but you can kind of see it as an extension of the label to tell you what's going to be in the data. That, that isn't done a ton, but I have seen it done before, so you can just keep that in mind. The next part of the ARINC word is the data, and this is the meat of the word. Um, the data is fully formatted by the engineer designing the system. Uh, usually we have bit 29 as our most significant bit and bit 11 as our least significant bit. This is a little bit confusing because it was the opposite for the label where 8 was our least significant bit and 1 was our most significant bit. So the order is kind of the opposite for the data, but that's just how it is for ARINC 429. The bits in the data field can be formatted in all kinds of different ways. Um, you can have one or more binary numbers. These could be binary coded decimal, two's complement, sign magnitude, whatever you like. It can be discrete bits um, where like each bit can tell you a different piece of information. Maybe for example, bit 17 in some frame tells you if the autopilot is on or not. You know, if bit 17 is a one, it tells you the autopilot's on. Bit 17 is zero, autopilot is off. Just an example of how you could do that. You can also use the data field to have these uh, enumerated types or enums they're usually called and that would be where you have kind of a collection of bits let's say bits 23 through 25 and the different value of those three bits together can mean different things. Maybe 000 has one meaning, 001 has another meaning, 010 and so on and you can have for three bits up to eight different values that those could represent. So that would be like an enum. Um, you can also have any other user-defined data format or some combination of these three and something else. Um, it's really up to the engineer how this data is formatted. And if you're not the one formatting it, you need to get that information from the person who is to figure out how to decode the data field. Next part of the word is the SSM. Um, this is the sign status matrix. This one, kind of like the SDI, is a pretty intuitive name. It usually tells you the sign or the status. So for sign, it could tell you positive or negative, north or south, and for status, usually we have these four different options, normal operation, functional test, failure warning, or no computed data. There are some industry standards for how you define the value of the two bits in the SSM for, for example, positive or failure warning for different kinds of data formats, but those standards aren't necessarily always followed. So I usually find it best just to see how the engineers define the SSM. Usually they'll give you a table of, you know, 00, 01, 10, 11, and then what each one means. And I find it easiest just to look at those tables and figure out what the SSM means that way instead of trying to memorize some industry standards that may or may not be accurate for your system. The last field we're going to look at is the parity bit. Um, this is the very last bit transmitted and it's computed right before the data is sent out by the transmitting hardware. The bit is used for error checking. Um, Usually in ARINC 429 we use odd parity, and this means that there's an odd number of ones in the entire word. So out of all the 32 bits, an odd number of them are ones. 
So right before the transmitter sends out the whole word, it checks how many ones and zeros there are. And if there are an even number of ones, it'll set the parity bit to one. If there are an odd number of ones, it'll set the parity bit to zero and just make sure that the whole frame is always sent with an odd number of ones. And then on the other end of the bus, the receiving unit will check the parity of the word, count up all the ones, and make sure that there are an odd number of ones. And if there aren't an odd number of ones, then the receiving unit knows that there was either some issue with the transmission or with the transmitter itself, and then we detect an error. The parity bit isn't usually something you're gonna end up looking at, but it is important to know that it's being used to check that the data you're receiving is consistent with the data that was transmitted. One final note on the Airing 429 word, um, I have these color coded here. These two uh, green sections, the label and the parity bit, those are pretty strictly defined by the Airing 429 standard in that the label is always represented in octal the same way and the parity is pretty much always odd and it's always used in the same exact way. But then these three middle fields here, uh, SSM, data, and SDI, those are a bit looser with how the Airing 429 standard defines them. And it's much more left up to the engineer to decide how they want to use these fields. There's a lot of flexibility in what the SDI, SSM, and data fields look like and how they're used, especially the data field. It can really be anything, however you want to use those 19 bits. And like I mentioned before, you definitely have industry standards for SSM, and there are some for SDI as well. But for the most part, you're really just defining it yourself, um, or whoever's designing the system has defined it, and you need to look at how they decided to use those bits. And that's going to do it for this video. So I hope this was helpful, and I hope you now have a bit better understanding of ARINC 429.